my parents from time to time speaking about the day that uh, JFK was assassinated. They could point out where they were at the time, where they heard the news, and the various aspects of what was going on around them at that particular time. When I was in college, I was uh, listening to the news as the Challenger blew up, and that, of course, was one of those kind of pivotal moments. And certainly 20 years ago, when the towers fell and the 9-11 attacks occurred, was one of those kind of watershed moments that impacted those who were around to see it, to experience it, to hear about it. Of course, what we see in these types of pivotal events through history is, at first, there'll be a dramatic kind of response from people. I remember when uh, 9-11 occurred, I was driving on the way to a meeting in Charlotte, as I'm often doing. And when I got back to Salisbury, the church was just packed with people praying. People had put, you know, lit candles and brought flowers and And we had to leave the church open all night simply because people wanted somewhere to go. They wanted to be able to do something. And yet, what we see is, after those significant events occur and time passes, oftentimes we forget to turn to God. We forget the importance of coming together as a people, we forget the importance of coming together in mutual support and respect. And I think it's important that we remember. And sadly, right now, we are going through a period in history where some in society want to forget the past, or wipe out the past. And again, I don't necessarily have uh, an overt opinion about, for example, removing a statue in Richmond, Virginia, but it is a kind of a symptom of this desire to forget where we came from and to forget what's occurred in the past. And of course, as we all know, a failure to remember oftentimes means Uh, falling into the same patterns of behavior moving forward. Because remembrance is important. If we begin to forget the significant events of the past, then we might be doomed to repeat them. Of course, now we are living in a time when many of the young, anyone who's younger than probably... 2021, maybe a little later, has no memory of 9-11. And there was uh, this interview, I guess, done with college students uh, recently to ask them about 9-11 and how that information should be presented. And it was really eye-opening to hear what some of them were saying that In presenting 9-11, you know, we should never present the images of what actually happened on that day. We should never um, point out who it was that perpetrated those terrible acts. Again, it's a whitewashing of an event that significantly impacted our country. The powerful image of that day, though, was that Certainly, there was tragedy, there was horror, but the response of ordinary, everyday citizens was really overwhelming, an overwhelming expression of bravery, of patriotism, and of goodness. Those who were willing to run into the breach and try as best they could to rescue those who were still alive or to carry out the dead and to treat them with the respect that they deserved. 
and we look at the days that followed 9-11, and there was a great outpouring, really, of not only love for our fellow human beings, especially those who were suffering loss, but also a love for the country, a recognition that we are stronger together than we are apart. And what we see, sadly, today, among many, is the exact opposite. We have become divided. We have become argumentative. We've become isolated in so many ways. And we've begun, if we haven't already, to lose our national identity. And this is a tragedy. And whether it's disagreements over vaccines and COVID and all of the things that surround that, or whether it's over uh, things such as Afghanistan or racism, we see the divisions that are occurring all around us. And the reality is, as some have said, that if we do not stand together, we will all fall one way or another. As Christians, we look at events such as 9-11 with a different eyes, or we should. Because what we see when we look through the eyes of faith is an opportunity to proclaim the goodness of God because it was Christ Jesus who could pick up a cross and walk to that hill outside of Jerusalem and give everything for the sake of others, even those who had condemned him to be there. And so as Christians, we are called to always look at tragedy and difficulty through the eyes of love, through the eyes of Christ, through the eyes of the cross. And I think it's incumbent upon us in the midst of the craziness that we see around us now to always remember that, that as followers of Christ, as those who bear his name, we must be instruments of hope and peace and unity in the midst of the chaos. That doesn't mean we sacrifice the truth. It doesn't mean we lose the capacity to stand for what we believe in. But it does mean that our first response is not to lash out at those around us, but to try as best we can to respond with the self-sacrificial love that comes from Christ on Calvary. And it is only when we rediscover the importance of faith in God, of faith in Christ, that we can hope to overcome the difficulties that we face today and to remind ourselves of all that has happened before and to see that we are much better as a people when we strive to first and foremost serve God and to do that by loving our neighbor, by standing up together to form something bigger than ourselves, a place where human dignity is respected, a place where freedom is respected, and a place where we come to a deeper appreciation of the fact that each and every one of us is called by God to love and serve him in this life so that we can be with him forever in heaven. 9-11 confronted the hedonistic society that was present at that time. And we see the secularism and the hedonism and the self-preservation and the selfishness just overwhelming our society here and now. So let's allow this anniversary to remind us of who we're called to be. We're called to be better. We're called to be those who stand up against hatred, who stand up against violence, who stand up against a lack of respect for human dignity. 
And we can only accomplish that by God's grace and by being faithful to the path that he's laid out for us, the path that ultimately leads to heaven, but that involves, as he points out, taking up our cross and following him. So we pray today for all of those who remember, all of those who continue to suffer the effects of loss from 9-11. And in a very special way, we need to pray for the country, for a country that seems to be losing its soul, losing its valuation of faith, and losing that which has made us strong over the years standing as a people who share in a love, a love for nation, a love for our fellow man, and a love for an ability to really show forth the best of what God calls us to as human beings.